Well, a warm welcome to today's talk. It's Sunday the 27th of February. Now, of course, ideally the virus would realise there's an outrageous criminal war going on in Europe and, and quietly go away. Uh, but unfortunately it won't. So I want to look at a little bit about the strategy we're using to, to get rid of the final sort of throes of this virus. Here it is here. It's caused all sorts of problems, but I do believe it's heading towards uh, endemicity and uh, a far smaller role in our lives as this pandemic is not going to quite go away, but become endemic and only cause minor illness, albeit over a, a few potential uh, years into the future, or even, even more than that into the future. I do plan to have something to say actually on the war, but probably from the aspect of, of mental health. Uh, and, and uh, psychiatric disorders that are probably prevalent in some of the uh, the individuals concerned, but that's not for for now. For, for now, I want to look at um, carry on with this idea of, of of natural immunity. And there's some studies from Israel that have been out for quite a few weeks now, in fact, a few months now, that show how much better natural immunity is than vaccine induced immunity, and that it seems to last for much much longer. But this just does not seem to be getting through to leading authorities around the world who are still following what I would consider to be a relatively old-fashioned strategy. So let's just look at this evidence here and see how the risk-benefit analysis for, for vaccination has changed. So it's natural immunity in Israel. This is, this is the title of the paper here. Now, it is a preprint, but it's based on very large-scale studies. Um, and I'll, I'll point that out as we go through. Early vaccinations were demonstrated to be significantly more at risk than later vaccinees. So early vaccinees, people that were vaccinated early, the immunity was declining and they were at greater risk of people that were vaccinated later on. And this is from the Maccabee uh, Healthcare Services in Israel. This represents 2.5 million people, 26% of the population of the country. And uh, the uh, authors say it provides a representative sample of the population of Israel. So basically, this is as good as a whole population study. It's, it's dealing with huge numbers. Now, they didn't use all of the numbers for all of the analyses. They picked samples, but they were remarkably large matched sample so they had groups to compare with now um th there were three groups uh, study comparing three groups so, so coronavirus to naive individuals in other words people that had not had the infection but did have two doses of vaccine 673,000 in that group so pretty large uh, previously infected but not vaccinated so again a pretty large group and we have been appealing there's a lot there's several million people in the uk who have um not been vaccinated and we've appealed repeatedly for data on these people comparing them with those that are vaccinated nothing seems to have come out of that as of yet previously infected with one dose of pfizer vaccine which is quite interesting uh, and again pretty large number there so um single vaccinated doubly vaccinated infected non infected people we evaluated four outcomes first of june to the 14th of august now let's note this is in delta times so strictly speaking, this does apply to Delta, although I will be giving evidence that I believe this applies to Omicron as well. So they're looking at SARS coronavirus 2 infection, as detected by PCR, uh, symptomatic disease, confirmed by PCR, COVID-19 hospitalisation, and of course, deaths. They were the four outcomes that they were looking at. And, and really, the, the evidence that they give here for the efficacy of natural infection compared to vaccination is really quite, really quite impressive. We're looking at these first set of results here. SARS coronavirus to naive individuals, in other words, they'd not been exposed to the virus, but they did have two doses of the vaccine, so they only had vaccine protection. And remember, there's this uh, group here to compare it to previously infected but not vaccinated, and a large group that they could compare this with. And they took into account when people were exposed, so whether it was natural infection or exposure to the vaccine, these were people that had been vaccinated or exposed in January or February. And basically they found that uh, there was a 13.06 fold increase for breakthrough infections in people that had had uh, two doses of vaccine compared to those that had been previously infected naturally but not vaccinated. It really is quite an impressive uh, result. So the vaccine immunity was waning much more quickly than the natural immunity. 
13 times more likely to be infected about nine months later. 13 times more likely to be infected if you'd had the vaccine compared to those who had the natural immunity. So the natural immunity win, winning, win, win, winning out there big time and the vaccine waning looking pretty, uh, pretty ominous there, actually not looking good at all. Then comparing infections in uh, vaccinated with uh, the previously infected people again, and, and the figures here, 238 infections in the previously vaccinated group, um, 19 infections in the previously infected but not vaccinated group. I know that doesn't quite work out at 13, but they took into account some comorbidities. So huge difference in the... Uh, breakthrough infection rate there 238 in the doubly vaccinated group 19 in the natural uh, infected group so again we see the natural immunity really winning out hands down there uh, increased risk of symptomatic disease now this is delta remember so these are the sort of delta features fever cough breathing difficulties diarrhea loss of taste and smell muscle aches weakness headache and sore throat we somewhat different now in the alpha period of course but again, here they found uh, in symptomatic infections 191 cases in the doubly vaccinated group and only 18 in the previously infected but not vaccinated group. A very significant result. So again, big, big differences there. At risk of hospitalisation, eight admissions in the uh, vaccinated group, one admission in the previously infected groups and thankfully no deaths in either group. So you could say eight times more people infected in the, those that had had two vaccines compared to those that had not been vaccinated but did have the natural immunity. You can see these are really quite significant differences and yet they don't seem to have been fed through into government policy policies at all, really, as far as I can see. March uh, 2020 to February 21, evidence of waning natural immunity was demonstrated. So there was some waning of natural immunity, but nothing like as much as the people that had been vaccinated. So SARS coronavirus, two naive vaccinees, people that had, had the vaccine, i.e. vaccinated, but no natural infection. And here they found nearly a sixfold increase for breakthrough infections and a sevenfold increase for symptomatic disease. So again, when we're looking at the time period there from March 2020, a uh, much, longer, much longer time period through to February 21, we are still seeing, we're seeing reduction in immunity from people that had the infection, yes, but six times more reduction in people that have been vaccinated and uh, seven times more in people that have been vaccinated, sevenfold reduction. So uh, seven, seven people that have been vaccinated, seven times more likely to get symptomatic disease compared to people that were enjoying protection from natural immunity and that's over quite a long time period because that as we said that goes from all the way from March 2020 to February 2021 so we're seeing a good longevity of natural uh, immunity well, so far we've been looking at the uh, comparisons between those that are vaccinated and those that have natural immunity without vaccination. Is this to say there's no benefit from vaccination? Well, well no, the study doesn't show that. The study does actually show benefit from hybrid immunity, that is from natural immunity and vaccine, at least over a period of time. So let's look at that now. Previously infected versus vaccinated and previously infected. In other words, previously infected only and those with what we call a hybrid immunity from vaccination and previous infection. And here uh, they found 20 infections in the uh, infected plus one vaccine group. So these people had had natural infections and one dose of vaccine. But they found 37 infections in the uh, unvaccinated group, in the infected but no vaccine group. So there is some advantage here to hybrid immunity. So what we can say here from this study really is that natural immunity from exposure to the virus is giving much better and longer lived immunity compared to vaccine immunity alone. But infection plus vaccination has got an added advantage. There is advantage to this hybrid immunity. 
But what really struck me in this study was how much more efficacious and how much more protection you get from natural immunity compared to vaccine immunity. And this is what doesn't seem to have filtered through into government policies yet. Because we've got millions of us currently being infected with Omicron. This has got to have a big immune boosting effect. And in my view, influences and changes the risk benefit analysis for vaccination versus no vaccination in people that have had a natural exposure especially uh, as the debate is going on in this country at the moment about vaccinating 5 to 11 year olds which is supposed to be starting in April though to be quite honest the government doesn't seem to see doesn't seem to be too enthusiastic about it so it probably is going to happen but the uptake may not be very high so it has changed that analysis, I think, that, that, that risk-benefit analysis, because we know so much more now about the, uh, the, the benefits of natural immunity and the longevity of natural immunity. The authors of this study conclude, uh, this study demonstrates that natural immunity confers longer-lasting and stronger protection against infection, symptomatic disease and hospitalisation caused by Delta. As I say, we'll be looking at Omicron in just a second, because we can only look where the data is. Uh, so the natural immunity is working much better compared to the Pfizer two-dose vaccine-induced immunity. So if you can choose between two doses of Pfizer-induced immunity and natural immunity, the natural immunity is winning hands down. Now, of course, this is not taking account of boosters. We would expect, well, we know boosters have an additional effect. So what we need now is a study comparing natural immunity against people that are boosted. And probably more importantly, we can't do it now, but how long that immunity is going to last for? Because it looks like the natural immunity is lasting much longer than the, uh, the vaccine-induced immunity. And it says individuals who were both previously infected with sars coronavirus 2 and given a single dose of vaccine gained additional protection against Delta. But again, how long will that last for, given that this data is showing that the natural immunity has greater longevity? Now, I'm just going to deal very briefly with this idea of whether this is working against Omicron. And we have dealt with this before. It was when we did some questions just about a week ago. Uh, are the data on natural immunity also valid for the Omicron variant? It seems to be yes. This is a letter from the New England Journal of Medicine. The paper was called Protection Against the Omicron Variant from Previous sars cov to Infection. It was from Qatar. They excluded vaccinated persons from the analysis. In other words, they were looking at just natural immunity these people were not vaccinated at all so this data is all people that are not vaccinated protection against reinfection is moderately low for omicron so protection against reinfection from the alpha was 92 uh, 90.2 uh, against the beta was 85.7, 90.2 against the delta and only 56% against the omicron because we know that many people are being reinfected with omicron that's spraying it quicker, that's giving a wider spread of immunity, and we know that people that have had Omicron are also very unlikely to get reinfected with Omicron, very unlikely. A protection against severe critical illness is actually similar. So uh, alpha, it was uh, basically 70%, 88 beta, 95 to 100 delta, uh, 88 basically for the Omicron variant. But of course, we know that people that have had Omicron are very unlikely to catch it again. Very low numbers. Therefore, if they don't catch it again, they're not going to be at risk from severe illness, hospitalisation and death. And the follow-up on that particular study was uh, 254 days to 376 days. So I think that's uh, fairly conclusive, really. Given that millions of us, for better or for worse, some might say for better, are being infected with Omicron now, this really should be feeding through into advice on whether vaccinations uh, are continuing to be necessary. Given the data that we've looked at uh, just a couple of days ago showing that people that have had BA1 Omicron are very unlikely to get BA2 Omicron, really that makes it hard to see where there is a place for an Omicron-specific vaccine. Pharmaceutical companies, of course, are going ahead. Both Pfizer and Moderna, I think, are going ahead with Omicron-specific vaccines. But the data we've looked at really is saying to me that they, these may not be necessary. And let's hope that governments and authorising bodies take this on board. 
Um, so fairly optimistic, natural immunity, effective, longer term than vaccine immunity. How long? We don't know. There is some decline over 18 months. But there again, we do know, as I've said quite a lot of times, and it's probably an invalid comparison, but people that were infected in 2003 with sars coronavirus one are still immune 17 years later to sars coronavirus 2 or good levels of cross-immunity anyway. So I'm optimistic for longer-term uh, immunity as we move into endemicity. And uh, thank you for watching.